so we had uh, done this grouping of these customers according to how much they had bought by calculating uh, total items for each category number of items and then we had uh, segregated them based on those who had only one item. One item, food. yeah. Mm -hmm. Then those who had few items, we had binned them as few items and many items. So few, less than ten. Less than ten, more than. More 10. than ten. And then we had kind of suggested that within these groups, one could look for a distance between them by looking column-wise at the separation between the numbers and finding a, how close the customers are using that. So that gives us a numerical way to justify that two customers are close to each other. Right? So should we go through that process? I mean, see, uh, um, we, we don't need to do it for this, I guess, right? Because yeah, the numbers so, are small. So we can do it. We for can do it for this. These are where some interesting patterns might be there. So what we need to do is maybe think of them as uh, you know six. So we one, can give two, them three, some, four, yeah, five, six. Let's just give them some Index numbers. Them. So yeah. we'll, we'll say this is customer one, two, three. So these are just an index that we are assigning. So we are saying that these are six customers and we want to compare every customer with every other. Every, so there are six customers, you want to compare everybody, everybody means six, each of them with others means six into five, 30. 30. But again, A compared with B and B compared with A are the same. Yeah. So that will be 15. 15 comparisons should come, right? Yeah. So 15 pairs we want to take. We have to be careful about these pairs, right? We should not make. Yes. We should make sure that all the pairs we have counted. We don't miss out. That is the first thing we will do. Now, for every pair, we have to compute. We want to compute a distance. Distance. So. So, so every pair we compute a distance. How we want to use that? Pairs which have the smallest distance will be the nearest customers. Nearest customers. That's what we want. That's what we want then to say. Patterns are similar across all the. So okay. for distance, let's just take a simple distance, which is just we'll take the difference. We difference, want so difference. So column wise. Column wise. So, we'll so take three minus three is zero like that. Thirteen minus eight is five. Yeah. So we'll always take the positive number. So we won't take with minus five plus five because we subtract and take the absolute value. Yeah. So right. We don't want it to cancel out that no. one person has more food and Correct. less utilities. And so the things. distance column wise we are taking, taking the absolute value of those, yeah. and then adding them. Adding the distance column wise. And that will be the total distance. That will be total distance. Yeah. And we want to now associate. There's a name for this. I mean, in maths we call this rectilinear distance. Yeah, I think or Manhattan distance. Manhattan distance. Yeah, they call it Manhattan, Manhattan distance. distance because because it's like how much if you are, have a grid of roads, how many roads you have to take to go from here to there. There, so x you go in the x direction, then you go in the y direction like that. So in each. Context, but here only thing is that we have one, two, three, yeah, four, so five, it's like if you are living five dimensions. Five dimensional universe, you have to do it. All right. And yeah, now we want to for every, every pair, as you said, we want to associate, we want to note down this distance. And note it's down a pain to say that, you know, it's Abhinav Srivatsan distance and it's Advait Akshay distance. So it will be useful to note them ag against these indices. So we want to say that the distance between 2 and 3, or distance between 3 and 6, right? So, that's so what's a good way to keep track? This should be a decent way of keeping track, no? Yeah. So. So actually, one way we could do is to just write down all these pairs. All and pairs. And then for every pair, we write down the distance next to the pair. Okay. So that could. Let's be try that first. I mean, okay. let's do. So let's start with one. One. So if you start with one, what are the possible ways of pairing one? One so to one two. One with two. two. One to three. One to three. One to four. One to five. One to six. That's one pair. One set of pairs, with which is covered with one. Yeah. Now you start with two. Yeah. Now two with one is already covered. Covered. Yeah, so we don't need to look at two, two and one. Two. So two with three. Two to two is obviously not meaningful because that would yeah, be. Yeah, no itself, yeah. Two to three, two to four, two to five, two to six. So then you start with three. Yeah. Three to four, three to five, three to six. This is a way of systematically enumerating the pairs, yes. right? And, and then four with five, four with six. And then finally five with six. Finally, I'll just write it here. Five with six. Right. So we should check. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 9, 12, 15. 15. Exactly. Wonderful. Separate. Wonderful. So now what we can do is now for every such pair, now we look at 1, 2. We want to find the distance 1, 2. So we look at row 1, row 2 and do this distance. Should we do and it? And then write it down. Yeah. So we can do that. So 1 and 2. 3 minus 3 is 0. 13 minus 8 is 5. 5. 4 minus 2 is 2. 7. So 0 plus 5, 5 plus 2, 7. 0, 0. So total distance is 7. So this distance is 7. 
1 okay. and 3. It's correct, no? This is 0, this is 0, yeah. this is 2, this is 5, That's this zero. is 0. So, 5 plus 2 is 7. Okay. Now, we want to do 1 and 3. One and three. One and three. Okay. So, 3, three minus 3 is 0, 3, three 10, 10, 13, 13 1, 14, 5, 19, 1, 20. 20. Okay. Then we do 1 and 4. Yeah. Okay. 2, 2, 4, 6, 1, 6 plus 1, 7, 3, 10, 3, 13. 13. Okay. You see, we can't we can't subtract the totals. Yeah, yeah. Because of the plus minus, right? Yes, exactly. So, right? so here is the actually the 31 minus 4 is 7. Yeah. We can't do that. Okay. Correct. Because here, for instance, the apparel is two more than this. So this is giving us some better. This is four more than that. Yeah. So three more than that. You can't cancel it, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. Now we are comparing one with five. Zero, zero four, four, one, five, four, nine, one, ten. One with six, three, five, eight, four, twelve, three, fifteen, one. Now we are done with all comparisons involving 1. 1. Okay, let's start with 2 now. Yeah. 2 and 3. 2 and 3. So 3 and 0. 3. 3. 5. 8. 3. 11. 5. 16. 1. 17. Okay, now we do 2 and 4. Yeah. Okay, 2. Okay. 1. 3. 3. 6. 3. 9. 3. Okay, now we are doing 2 and 5, yeah. 0, zero. Nine, 9, 3, 12, 4, 16, 1, 17. Okay, now we are doing 2 and 6, six. 3, yeah. 10, 13, 2, 15, 3, 18, 1, 19. So, we are done with 2, yeah, now three go to 3, yeah. 1, 6, 7, 0, 7, 2, 9, 4, 13. All right. Now we are doing 3 and 5. 3 and 5. 3, 3, 14, 17, 0, 17, 1, 18, 0. 18. Okay. Now we are doing 3 and 6. Yeah. 0, okay. 15, 15, 5, 20, 2, 22, 0. 4 and 5. 4 and 5. 2, okay. 8, 10, 0, 0. So it's still 10. Yeah. 1, 11, 4, 15. Okay. We're doing 4 and 6. six. 1, yeah. 9, 10, 5, 15, 0, 15, 4, 19. Okay. Now finally we come to 5 and 6. Okay. 3, mm -hmm. 1, 4, 5, 9, 1, 10, 0. All right, so what do we see? So the smaller the distance, the nearer they are. So in this whole thing, there is only one distance less than 10, which is 1 and 2. Okay. So 1 and 2 is closest. Then the next smallest thing is 10, I think 1 and 5 and 5 and 6. Right. But of course, the thing is that 2 to 5 is very large. 17, 2 to 6 is also very large, 19. So, what I am saying is, if we group, say that 1, 5 is close and 5, 6 is close, 1, 6 is different. So, we have to be careful about, so 1, 2 is close for example, but if we try to group 1, 2 and 5 because 1, 5 is close, then 2, 5 turns out to be 17. Mm -hmm. So, uh, grouping into 3 is, then you have to somehow decide how to Maybe you could take the total distance across all the pairs in that group mm, and do mm, something mm, like that. But mm. basically we want to do this. But I see something interesting here, maybe mm. before we identify. So actually I think there is a nicer way to write down this table. Mm. Right? So it's like we have to pair up these six guys. Mm. Oh, I see. Okay, keeping one, two in the rows and one, two in the column. Mm -hmm. of these six guys. Okay. Of course, we don't need to pair up anybody with themselves. Mm. So, we want to put something here, 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 here and here. So, these are the 
five pairs. This is this is what you've written here. First row, mm -hmm. uh, first thing there. So those numbers can be filled in there, I guess, yeah. right? And then similarly, we have. Oh, I see. So you only get entries over here. Yeah. So only entries above the diagonal of this matrix will come, right? and these will be exactly our fifteen entries. And then we don't need to put anything here because they will just be the same. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And now we can put the same thing here. So we can say seven twenty. So it gives us some spatial way of seeing it, huh? Yeah. Maybe something will come if you look at this. I don't know. We'll see. So this is the same data, just arranged in a more possibly logical way. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. So now, if you want a pair, you say like four, five. You go to the fourth row and the fifth column, and then you say, okay, four, five is eighteen. Like that. Okay. Four, five, yeah. This is what this is. So five, this is five, one, two, oh, sorry, three, yeah, four, five. So this, this whole thing should be shifted down because one is not compared to itself. So there is an empty row here. Which is not right. So this is one, two, right? One, two, and two. Okay, okay. So there's no six, six. Sorry. So there's an empty row here. So six is not being. So we don't actually compare six with anything. Yeah. Okay. So this is five. Yeah, so there's only five. Yes. Okay. So now we were saying that this is clearly a close. So one two is a close pair. fit, and five six five, seems six to be also a close fit. Mm. Somewhere here also there are some. Here also yeah. is one. one and five. one five is a close fit. But five six. Oh, one five six. That's all. So one five six may be a good. So group. look at one five six may be a decent group. Let's look at that one five six. But one six is not so good. See, one six is sixteen. Right? Ah. So why is one and five a good group? Uh, well, they have similar in these three columns. They are similar. They are different in that. So it's a question of quantities. So, but I guess what we are really looking at in this is not so much the grouping part of it, which is a separate question, but how to keep. Maybe if we had done better distance measurement, correct. We did some very. We did grossed up a lot of things. Yeah. Now that we know that we have to pair things, yeah, for can. these people especially, we can ignore this gross numbers. Go back to their original data. Take the original full data here, mm. and then find a distance directly from these cards. Maybe you get a better distance measure, and then you learn something from that, mm. right? Yeah, and there are many assumptions we made. For instance, we looked at the number of line items, but we didn't look at how many of each they were buying. Yeah. So you could so look at the price, yeah. total cost. There could be somebody who buys large quantities of one particular mm. item, as opposed to somebody who buys only one quantity of that item. And we are grouping them in the same bucket. So that way, how we collect this information that we start with is also important. I mean, so the, I mean, I'm I'm a little curious about this this method that we are using. This business of taking pairs. So we said that there is this nested iteration, right? So we are saying that there is an iteration, outer iteration, and there is another iteration which is inside this outer iteration. So there are this, we have nested the iterations. And we, when we did it for those cards, we found that it was a bit messy to do it mm. because you, you start with one card, you move to a different pile. Yes. But now for each of these cards, you have to measure again with the original pile. So you have to go through that yeah. first pile once again. Yeah. So you have to keep two yeah. cards aside, right? One which you have seen, not seen, and then among those that you have not seen, again those that you have considered, not considered. Seen, not seen as the outer iteration, considered, not considered as the inner iteration, right? So that business of keeping track of the where you are in the outer iteration and where you are on the inner iteration was messy actually. So now we have a much more systematic way of keeping track of these inner and outer iteration pairs because we just made all the pairs. So right? let us say that this is the outer. So for every card. Every customer, we are checking every other customer. Yeah. So this is the inner. Right? Yeah. So what we do is we first fix that we are here. Okay. So we mark that we are looking at this. Uh. And then we start moving down this list. So we know that we are not going to look at. Because it's already the same card. card. Yeah. Right? So then we look at this item. So mm. this is a kind of. So we are fixing on. Customer one and second customer is two. Then after we are done with that, then we move to customer three. three. Then after we are done with that, we move to customer four. After we are done with that, we move to five. 
and so on and then finally when we reach the end of the list right then there are no more customers to look at so now we move to the next row here no more customers to look, look at, at in comparison for one for one for the outer, the outer loop outer loop so then you start again with two you start with two now we go to three and now we know that we should not look at one. We already seen we it. Already seen it. We should not look at two because it's two and two is not. So you start with three, three, then four, and five. So it looks like we have two arrows, right? One arrow is yeah, so keeping track of the first. Correct. So and then we are moving kind of. We keep track of one row, and then we move across the columns. Huh. And then when we reach the end, we move. Move the first row again. Move this back. Move this back. Move again. Move this back. Move this so back. that's a systematic way of keeping track of yes. the same, but same data set. Same data set, but we are moving through this data set in two Correct. levels of iteration, Correct. right? Nested. Yeah. So both the rows and the columns cor correspond in this case to the same, same data set. To the same list of names. Same list of names. But we are just processing them in a system. Processing them. In a, we are trying to find all pairs, yeah. and there is a systematic way of doing these pairs by keeping track of this yeah. matrix, and row, okay. column and thing. When it's two nested iterations, we can of course visualize it easily. If hmm. it becomes more, like for instance, we wanted all triples. Triples. Then, then we, we need three. Have, when we need to draw, we need to draw a cube. A cube, and then it'll be difficult to draw on a piece of paper and keep track. But mentally, we can imagine yeah. that we are keeping track of three dimensions. Three we'll arrows we'll have, right? First arrow will move, so we don't have to yeah. draw it as rows and columns. Yeah. So one arrow will move this way, one arrow will move that way, and one arrow will move up. Up. So up to three. When, when one is done, then you'll move this. Then yeah. So then you'll move to the next one here. Then you'll go all the way down. For each of these, you'll go all the way up. And then so on. So you keep going up and okay. then you come back. So far, luckily, we have not had to do three iterations. Yeah. But, <laughs> but, but for yeah. two iterations, this two seems, iterations to this seems to be okay. Nice. I think this is nice. Yeah. And then once you can do these two iterations, what you do at each step of the iteration can vary. Even within the problem, as we said, we could define the distance differently or we could calculate some other measure. So one, and then the important thing is that once you have it indexed in this way, then you can note it down neatly as a as a table. Mm. So you don't lose track of. So in this measure, for example, we have this kind of awkward thing where we have to keep track of the pair and the. So we don't have to worry about that anymore because the pair is, which pair it is, is determined by its position. Position in the table. In the table. So there's huh. kind of an implicit way of keeping track of that, uh, the pair associated with each of these numbers. So we had to, when here, we actually, with the data itself, we organize as tables here, but the difference is in this table and this table is. In this table, the <coughs> row was. Names, yeah. column was categories. Yeah, so the rows and the columns are of different different types. types. Whereas in this table, they both names. Yeah, correct. Because you're comparing names with names, right? Yeah. So you can make all kinds of tables. It looks like table is a beautiful way of. Yeah, tables are certainly a very beautiful way of organizing. Useful way to organize, to organize information. information. Because then by looking at the row and the column for each row and each column, basically that's what we are doing here. Here we are saying for customer five and customer four, what is the distance? Here we are saying for customer Advait and item toiletries, what is the number? Yeah. So basically, by looking at that position in the table, by looking at the row num row identity and the column identity, you know what that quantity is talking about. So that's a very useful way of arranging data. So tables, yeah, tables are I think are uh, quite. That's why I guess you see them all over the place because everybody can easily read them off and also update them, right? When you want to update. But to make the thing is that. This table I understand because we knew that we had six items, so we could make this table easily. This one, we don't know how many categories are there. Correct. First, we could first pass, make a pass, find out the number of categories, find out the number of names. Yes. Yeah, so then we once you know that, that even when we were making this table, because we have to recognize whether this customer is a new one or the, it's a second bill for an existing yeah, customer. Yeah, correct. And we also made some uh, uh, decisions, like we said that we would put. You know, batteries, which were utilities and uh, stationery and uh, electronics, all into one one one, one so category, one thing, yeah, one one column. Uh, kind of grouping. Grouping with it. To decide the column names, but yeah, as you said, if you can do one one pass to do that, just to check what are the different column names that could come and how you hmm. would want hmm. to collapse them, then after that, keeping track of them becomes easy. All right.